has a question to ask. Especially if you are going through troubled waters. If there is something confusing in your life. If there is something that is dark and dreary and weary in your life. If you happen to be in a place you don't understand. If it appears that the history of your life is a history of confusion, a history of problems, a history of pain, a history of difficulty, you are asking a question. There was a man in the Bible, he saw what he did not expect. And he experienced what was very painful in his life. Because of that, he asked a question. If you have a Bible, it's in Matthew chapter 11. If you don't have a Bible, they're just listening and I will read it to you. Matthew chapter 11 verse 3. And he said unto him, Are thou he that should come? But we look for another. Is this the person we're expecting? Or do we look for another? The person that asked that question. At that time, he was in the prison. His life was confusing to him. And it appeared he didn't understand what was happening in life. So he sent a message to Jesus Christ. He said, Are you the one coming? Or do we still wait for another? Is this my day? Or should I wait for another day? Is this my deliverer? Or do I look for another deliverer? Is my Savior here today? Or do I wait for another Savior? Is there a solution to my problem today? Or do I wait for another avenue for the solution to my problem? Actually, the whole nation of Israel, they have been expecting somebody to come. And they knew that when he comes, all their problems will be solved. Their burden will be taken away. The yokes in their lives will be broken. All the destructive elements in their lives will be taken away. The only problem they had is that they did not know when he will come. And so Jesus Christ came. And that's why John said, Are you the man we're waiting for? Are you the Messiah we're waiting for? Are you the master of circumstances we're waiting for? Are you the healer we're waiting for? Are you the deliverer we're waiting for? Are you the savior we're waiting for? Are you the one to come? Or do we wait for another? I come to talk to you tonight. And the subject is the deliverer has come. The deliverer has come. Tonight he'll be by your side. The Savior has come. Tonight is going to get hold of you and is going to save you. Tonight, 
the one that breaks every yoke from every life, he has come. Every yoke in your life will be broken. Every power of Satan in your life will be destroyed. He has come. I said he has come. I said he has come. And I'm going to give you a chance that you welcome him. You will go back home with him. You'll take his power back home with you. You'll take his salvation back home with you. You'll take his healing back home with you. That deliverance will take him back home with you. Because the deliverer has come. There is a passage of scripture that when you read, you understand that this is your day and this is your time, not tomorrow. Your deliverer has come today. Your savior has come today. Your healer has come today. The miracle worker has come today. And today you are going to receive his power in your life in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm reading verse 37. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, for yet a little while, he that shall come shall come and will not tarry. For yet a little time, the Savior you have been expecting will come. The healer you have been expecting will come. The deliverer you have been expecting will come. Just a little while. And by the time I finish the message tonight, he'll be by your side. He'll take your blindness away. He'll take your paralysis away. He'll take your tuberculosis away. He'll take your cancer away. He'll take your insanity away. Just a little while now. He that shall come will come. And he will not tarry. I told you I'm talking to you about the deliverer as come. I'm going to give the message to three parts. Number one, the expectation. The expectation. If you're sick, there should be an expectation in your heart. If you have a burden, there must be an expectation in your heart. If you're poor, there must be an expectation in your heart. If there is a need in your life, there must be an expectation in your life. Number one, the expectation. Number two, the evidence. You are expecting the deliverer. How will you recognize him? What evidence does he have? What certificate does he hold? What credentials will he present? I'm going to show you the evidence. Number one, the expectation. Number two, the evidence. Number three, this is wonderful. Number three. Everybody say number three. The enrollment that he is, he will take you and he will put your name down. 
the enrollment, he will embrace you. You will enter in. The salvation will be yours. The healing will be yours. The miracle will come your way. The deliverance will come to you. And then you will be able to say, I got it. I got it. Tonight you will get it. I said tonight you will get it. The enrollment. Number one, the expectation and desire for the deliverer. Expectation and desire for the deliverer. Number two, the evidence of the desired deliverer. And then number three, enrollment with the deliverer. And let me come back to number one. And I come back to Matthew chapter 11 verse 3. Matthew chapter 11 verse 3. And, and said unto him, Art thou, the, art thou that, that shall come? Or do we look for another? There were many helpless people in the land. And there were many poor people in the land. There were many sorrowful people in the land. They went to the right, there was no hell. They went to the left, there was no hell. They went backwards, there was no hell. They ran forward, there was no hell. They went to the tabernacle, there was no hell. And they went to the seaside, there was no hell. They went to the mountain top, and there was no hell. They tried to fast, and there was no hell. They tried to pray, and there was no hell. They went to the priest, and there was no hell. They did everything they knew to do, and there was no hell. And so they began to expect that one day will be my day. They began to expect that that person that is called the Messiah, that is called the Christ, the power of God that came to destroy the works of the devil. They said, I know that one day will be one day. I have tried everything I can try. And yet there's no solution to my problem. And so they said, one day I know he will come. Is that the story of your life? You have body, you have a problem, you have a heartache, you have a sickness, you have poverty, you have a curse, you have all the works of the devil troubling your family. You have fasted, you have prayed, you have tried everything you could try. And yet, there was no solution. And yet, you have not given up. You said, one day will be one day. My solution will come. One day will be one day. My healing will come. One day will be one day. And the yoke will be broken. One day will be one day. And all the activities of the devil will stop in my life. One day will be one day, and my barrenness will vanish away. One day will be one day, and the incurable disease in my life will go. You were full of expectation. That one day you have been expecting is today. I said it's today. The power of God will come where you are. That power will, will be like an explosive. It will destroy the works of the devil. That great
great body you will be carrying, that great sickness in your body that your spiritual could not deal with. Tonight is that night. Today is the day. Today is the day. Christ is coming your way. The deliverer is coming your way. The healer is coming your way. Everything will vanish away. Because the day has come. The expectation, by the way, why were the people of Israel full of expectation? Why were they saying, I know my time will come? Why were they saying, I know my day will come? What gave them the expectation? I I'll show you. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. And I'm reading, I'm reading there from verse 4. Say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. The Lord said unto Isaiah, a prophet in Israel, he said, Isaiah, tell the people and say to them of a fearful heart. Why were they fearful? This poverty, will it ever go away? This sickness, will it ever be healed? This calamity, will it ever go away? This impossibility, will it ever be possible?